Many people wonder about the concepts of NILs, which is why we decided to break down to you what NILs mean for the NCAA. Athletes will be paid for their image. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's head into it. This is groundbreaking because NIL rules previously prohibited athletes from accepting payment in order to maintain their eligibility. The rules had kept them in the NCAA's amateur category, but that was no longer the case. Athletes in eight states, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, New Mexico, Ohio, and Texas were supposed to be able to take advantage of the changes starting July 1. Each of those states passed legislation or issued executive orders allowing student athletes to profit from their NIL. Similar laws and legislation were quickly enacted in other states. The NCAA quickly made changes after the devastating loss of the NCAA versus Alston Supreme Court case and mounting pressure from the D1 Council to adopt NIL policy. As a result, on June 30, the Division I Board of Directors agreed to allow college athletes across the country to profit from their NIL. Leaders in Divisions 2 and 3 also took similar steps. The once unbreakable NCAA amateurism rules were shattered in an instant. Let's take a look at how we got here and what this means for college athletes in the future. How did the NIL battle begin? California took the lead in 2019 when Governor Gavin Newsom signed the Fair Pay to Play Act. On an episode of LeBron James' show The Shop, Governor Newsom explained what the bill signing would entail before putting pen to paper. Governor Gavin Newsom stated, It will spur dozens of other states to introduce similar legislation and it will improve college sports by putting the athletes' interests on par with the institution's interests for the first time. The power arrangement is now being rebalanced. Governor Newsom was correct. The passage of the Fair Pay to Play Act set off a chain reaction. States began to sign bills and executive orders, allowing their student athletes to benefit from their NIL, just as he predicted. But why is that? Why did states finally become motivated to make a change? I'd like to believe that Governor Newsom was the driving force behind other states recognizing the NCAA's business model's severe inequity and flaws. But I believe it came down to the fact that California schools now had a significant recruiting advantage over schools in other states. Recruits would choose to go to school in California because it offered them a better chance to make money. Who will pay student athletes? Despite the fact that the NCAA dragged its feet and was essentially forced to allow athletes to profit from their NIL, the NCAA is not responsible for paying them. Instead, third-party organizations are to blame. Athletes can now sign endorsement deals with companies that want to use their NIL to promote their products or services now that NIL rights are fully operational. The athletes will be compensated in exchange. Deals were already in the works prior to July 1 as Iowa men's basketball guard Jordan Bo Bohannon signed with Boom in Iowa Fireworks. Other athletes, such as Wisconsin Badgers quarterback Graham Mertz, have launched their own brands. Schools have also taken steps to support their athletes in a variety of ways, from creating individual logos for each athlete, as USC has done, to launching specific programs to assist student athletes with branding. However, while many people may be surprised by how much money top tier athletes can make with their newfound NIL freedom, another group of athletes will also benefit. BYU women's basketball guard Shelly Gonzalez is an excellent example of this. Is Shelly Gonzalez as well known as Stanford's Haley Jones or UConn's Paige Beckers? No, she's not, but she's been building a brand since she was in high school. Gonzalez had a YouTube channel for five years, and when she first started her career as a D1 women's basketball player, she invited others to join her on her journey. Her Instagram account now has 76.7 thousand followers, and her YouTube channel has 129 thousand subscribers. Gonzalez Gonzalez could have made money off her content like other influencers for years, but her status as a student athlete kept her from doing so. She can finally cash in now that the door is open. Gonzalez may not be able to get endorsement deals solely because of her athletic ability, but she can now capitalize on the brand she's been building for years. Are student athletes, on the other hand, still considered amateurs? Yup, despite the introduction of NIL rights, student athletes are still considered amateurs, but as the NCAA tightens its policies around NIL rights. The definition of an amateur may change. Are there other opportunities for athletes to make money? 
there aren't any right now, but there will be more in the future. There are seven NIL bills in Congress, but some of them go beyond the NIL rights that athletes will have. The College Athletes Bill of Rights, sponsored by Senator Cory A. Booker and Representative Janice D. Schakowsky, and the College Athlete Rights Organize Act, sponsored by Senator Christopher Murphy, are two examples of the bills that could continue to give student athletes rights. Both bills propose new ways for student athletes to earn money, ranging from revenue sharing to receiving wages from the NCAA and their schools. What do you think about this news? Are you glad about the fact that college athletes will now get paid for their image? Let us know in the comment section. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.